good to be back in the house of the Lord this morning, and I'm, I'm thankful that I'm able to stand here and read the scripture to you. I might not say nothing that will help you in any way, but I know when I read the God's word, it will help you. And so we've tried to study a little bit on something other that would be a, a blessing to you, and we want you to bear with us and, and pray for us that we might uh, be in his will. This morning we want to go to John 12 and verse 20. John 12 and verse 20. All right, this was prior to the Passover that I'm uh, fixing to read to you, and uh, it was four or five days, I think, uh, before the Passover. But in verse 20 of chapter 12, and there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. The same came therefore to Philip, which was of Bethsaida and of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. And Philip cometh and telleth Andrew, and, and again Andrew and Philip tell Jesus. Mm -hmm. All right. Now we want to look at this a little bit this morning and notice this thing that happened here when these people from Greece, the Greeks, came up and said, we would see Jesus. Now I, I believe with all my heart and soul that this was the knob, this was the button that turned on the last days of the Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. because he knew he knew what was fixing to come. And notice in verse 23 what he says, And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come. Amen. And that the Son of Man should be glorified. Now, I want to read something else to you in the book of Matthew to kind of get us to go on here. Matthew 2 and chapter, uh, and verse 1, I believe it is. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. And when Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with them. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to bring out something to you here. This, this, I believe, is that other button. I know what it is. <coughs> that turned on Jesus Christ coming to this world mm -hmm. and, and lived here some several 30 years. And, uh, and he, as he lived here and as he uh, uh, went among the people, it's like, sort of like uh, Eric was talking about the blind. He saw the blind, and the thing of it was, he saw those that were not physically blind, but those that were spiritually blind. Amen. And he was the one that uh, brought all these messages to them, and how that, that uh, he could... Uh, help them, but they wouldn't. They wouldn't let him. So we see here uh, that Herod heard him, heard of him, and and listen. He wanted to see him, mm -hmm. but now he wanted to see him for a different reason. He wanted to kill him, right? And of course, he put that out plainly in, in about two years when he had all the children, baby boys, killed, and and, right. and, and so. But listen, to this, and they said unto him. Uh, and, no, let me look. and when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. Mm -hmm. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophets, And thou, and, and not thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the last, uh, least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor Amen. that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod went, when he had heard, apparently called the wise men, inquired of them diligently 
what time the star appeared. Mm -hmm. And so we know the rest of the story about the wise men, and the wise men was visited by an angel, and uh, uh, he warned them, said, you go the way, because uh, it's not right. I mean, we don't, I don't want you to go this way and go back and tell Herod. So we see here that there was a plan all the way from the time that Jesus Christ was born into this world until he hung the cross of Calvary. And, and there are certain things here that points to that time. So back in our lesson in John 12, uh, 20, and as these people came and said, Sir, we would see Jesus, uh, they, Philip, come and tell us Andrew, and again, Andrew and Philip tell Jesus. Mm -hmm. And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come mm -hmm. that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, and listen to this, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die. Talking about talking about planting or talking about him going to the cross of Calvary and him being laid in a tomb. And he says, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it but if it dies it bringeth forth much fruit Amen. And so here we, we see we see a sad part of the story and and, and then there's a, a great priceless part of the story because jesus is telling them hey in order for me to be a blessing and to do the things that it's my job to do and it's been appointed to me i have to die Mm -hmm. And I have to be killed, and I have to be resurrected. And he's, he's using it as a point of, uh, like a, a grain of seed, uh, wheat, corn, whatever. And so he says in verse uh, uh, 20, last 24, but if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Mm -hmm. And we know this morning that Jesus Christ did die the death that he died, and he brought forth much fruit before and after he died. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life. And I, I looked at this, this verse here, and it says, in this world. And that's the key to this, this 25. He that loveth his life shall lose it. Mm -hmm. And that this morning is one of the problems that I have and the, the most of the human race is that they're that they're worrying about things that are not important mm -hmm. now so he says uh he that loveth his life shall lose it and of course if we love this world and all the things that it has to uh help us with and it it, it and we, we we remember as jesus was tempted of the devil and the devil said all of this that, that i have all that I have the power to give it to you, I'll give it to you. Mm -hmm. And here, Jesus says here, he says, he that, loveth, uh, he that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it until life eternal. And this morning, it's the job of the church, it's the job of the families, it's the job for all of us to repeat and to tell others about Jesus Christ and to warn people of the things that they're doing mm -hmm. that they're not doing. And this morning, uh, we can tell people about the world and what it has to offer. And uh, the, the devil is out there fanning the $50 bills in front of you and the big cars and the new houses and things like mm -hmm. that. So, no, you come this way, you come this way, well, when he gets you in his trap, he's got you. Right. And so listen this morning, take heed. Take heed if there be anyone of you that is lost this morning or, or has backslidden or don't just plain don't know the Lord. Listen, you need to think about this because it's the most serious time in your life. And one of these days before long, we're going to all have to do the thing and that is <coughs> and People this morning, it's too dangerous a risk to take any 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 kind of a risk at all because 
uh, we need to we need to search out our lives each day. We need to keep praying up. We need to listen to the Holy Spirit what He's saying. Amen. Because He will tell you, and He'll He'll tell you in a, in a quiet manner, and you be easy and don't get up frustrated because the Holy Spirit uh, can be uh, pushed away very easy. So here. Here he says in verse 26, if any man serve me, let him follow me. Mm -hmm. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. And so this morning, if you're his servant, he's saying this, you follow me, you, you study your word, your Bibles, and you do the things that are pleasing to the Lord, and stay away from the world, and, and I know we have to have things of the world, but we don't have to love them. Right. We, we, we have a need for uh, money, we have a need for a job, we have a need for a house and a car. We need these things to do what we gotta do, but we don't have to fall in love with them to the point that we'll stay out of church right. and, and, and work or do this or do that and not uh, not come to hear God for it because that's the that's the most important thing in this world. It's better than any lollipop that you'll ever live. Amen. Okay. So now he says here, for I am very shall be also be also my servant. Be if any man serve me, him my father, him will my father honor. And so how do we get the the honor of the father? And the father is the one that guides us he's the one that takes over everything by serving the lord jesus mm -hmm. christ and we can we can we can listen to the holy spirit and what he has to say and and be guided by the holy spirit and please the father by honoring uh, by honoring so now here he says here if any man serve me let him follow me and where I am, there shall also my, my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my, I done read that now. In verse 27, now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, talking about his dying, but for this cause came I unto this hour. Amen. And Father, glorify thy name. Mm -hmm. And so, what he was asking for was this morning is if it be thy will, Father, if it be thy will, it's in the other scriptures, if it be thy will, may this pass from me. Now I I don't think I don't think it was the the death that he that he uh, was worried about because listen, he'd been through he'd been through coming to this there was, a, there was a time when he was in heaven and he come through this earth, he come to this earth, went into Mary and went forward mm -hmm. and, and right. And so he's got to go the same way. He's got to go out again and go to the Father. And he knew that. Mm -hmm. and, and But listen, the sins and all that he had to bear on his shoulders and all that, that was that was a terrible agony to him too and so but he said not, not thy will but mine be done father so mm -hmm. uh we that is the attitude that we need to take this morning uh, then came there in verse 28 then came there a voice from heaven saying i have both glorified it and will glorify it again the people therefore that stood by and heard it said that it thundered others said an angel spoke jesus answered and said this voice came not because of me but for your sake mm -hmm. and these things that you uh see so many times of and, and and the things you wonder about them and all it's coming for your sake and for my sake and the lord knows how to speak to our hearts <coughs> He lets things happen to us and we say, well, Lord, you shouldn't have let that happen to me because I've served you. But listen, it's for your good. Uh, and, and, and especially in these worldly possessions, he, he removes them because you <coughs> them. And, and it'll hinder you in time to come if he don't remove them. So he moves them out of the way 
and pray that you could serve him in a greater way. <clears throat> All right, I've got problems <laughs> with my hearing aids and glasses. <laughs> and all right, <clears throat> now in verse thirty-one, now is the judgment of this world. Mm -hmm. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out, or this word prince, I think it was, they call it ruler. And, and if I then be lifted up. From the earth will draw all men to me. So Amen. he is talking about on the cross of Calvary being lifted up, being crucified. And he said, if, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men to me. And that was the way that you and I have eternal life. And that is when he was lifted up. He drew me, he drew you to him through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so this morning, it's a, it's, a, it's a terrible thing to think about what Jesus had to suffer with and what he had to do. And, and you know, I was thinking uh, this morning about those that Jesus seen when he was, when he was healing. And a lot of them I wondered about that he healed, he looked at him and, and could knew he knew who would and who wouldn't come to the right. Father. And he looked at him and thought about he'll never come. He'll never come. And that's that's our problem this morning too. Is you know we get we get it so easy uh, uh, so easily get upset concerning when we try to be a witness to someone and. It, it, it shouldn't be that way. We should bear with them because, listen, we were there once. Amen. And so whenever whenever we try to witness to someone, we need to think about what Jesus did. Jesus raised that boy from the dead. Amen. He went and touched that briar, that casket, and he raised it. And, you know, we don't know to this day if, if he went to heaven or if he, if he didn't. But the thing of it is, Jesus knew. Amen. And Jesus Jesus didn't say, well, I'm wasting my time. But listen, he did that to exalt God's name, and we do the same thing. We witness to the same thing uh, to exalt God's name. And so this is, this is some of the things that we need to remember and think about on this. But he says here, and if, and if I be lifted up to this earth, I'll call all men to me. Now, I want to look at uh, John... I mean, Matthew 2 and 1, on one. I think it is. No, it's not either. John, John 1, turn to John 1, I've got it all mixed up. John 1, 35. See if I can get this going. I bet you it'll be the last page of turn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, John 1 and verse 35. I just wrote that here. Oh, mercy. Again, the next day after John stood and two of his disciples, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. Amen. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned and saw them, following and said unto them, What seek ye? And I, I was thinking about this, we shall see Jesus. We will see Jesus. But he asked them, What seek ye? And they said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted master. Mm -hmm. Where dwellest thou? And you know, it's a good it's a good question. Of course, uh, sometimes to, we might think about where does Jesus dwell? Where is he at? Is he is he close by? Is he in my heart? Is he sitting on the right hand of the Father? Well, he's all in places. Amen. And uh, uh, he says here, uh, he said unto them, Come and see. Then came and saw where he dwelt with 
p.m. that day, where it was about the tenth hour. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. Mm -hmm. He first finding his own brother Simon and said unto him, We have found the Messiah. Now, again, you know, that's a, that's a statement out of this world because he says, We have found the Messiah. Amen. And he understood it through John the Baptist. He was one of John the Baptist's uh, disciples. And so, and he brought him to Jesus, and when Jesus helped him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. Mm -hmm. The day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee and find Philip, and said unto him, Follow me. Amen. So we see here, we have found the Messiah. Uh, we shall see Jesus. These things, these things all go together because they were looking for Jesus. Uh, uh, this Simon Peter here and all they were looking for him because John had identified Jesus when he said, Behold the Son of God and uh, the Lamb of God. And when he baptized him, and, and so this hooks in with what Simon Peter and them were looking for. Amen. They were looking, they were looking for him because they, they knew that he was the Messiah. Amen. And, 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 and uh, Simon said unto him, We have found the Messiah. Now, the day, uh, the day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee and find Philip and said unto him, Follow me. Now, Philip was a, the, city of, uh, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said unto him, We have found him of whom Moses and the law and the prophets did write, and Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Joseph. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there be, can there any good thing come? <coughs> Philip said unto him, Come and see. Mm -hmm. So we, a lot of the time we, we, we have this desire, like uh, they did, we would see, we would see Jesus. Mm -hmm. But then the thing of it is, when we have the opportunity to really get close to him, uh, we don't, we don't, we don't, we didn't not as encouraged because uh, Philip said unto him, "Come and see." Mm -hmm. But now, these these are some of the things that we need to take heed to when when we're uh, when we're in prayer and the Holy Spirit is dealing with us and speaking with us, and uh, it speaks to our hearts. We need to listen, people. Mm -hmm. uh, and listen, you say, "Well, I don't ever have that." Well, you just ain't praying right. Mm -hmm. You just ain't praying right because I know the Holy Spirit speaks to the hearts. I know that the Spirit of God is in me and, and, and the Holy Spirit speaks to my soul and speaks to yours. And all you have to do is give Him a little time and, and not get one of these, thank you Lord, thank you Lord, thank you Lord, and go. Because listen, sometimes we need to uh, put everything else aside like the mm -hmm. world. We don't need to have the world interfering with us because the world will say, hurry up and get this over with when you go to work. Or, hurry up and do this when you go to the grocery store. But we need to we need to take our time. And we need to we need to listen to the Holy Spirit what he has to say because he's telling you the truth. Mm -hmm. And it's not like Satan. Uh, Satan will tell you something and you will think it's the truth, but he's a liar from the beginning. Amen. And so be careful when you uh, get in this condition. So here, uh, let me see if you can read a little bit more. Uh, Nathan in verse 47, uh, Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said unto him, Behold, an Israelite indeed in whom there is no God. And then Amen. Nathanael said unto him, Whence knowest thou me? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou was under the fig tree, I saw thee. Mm -hmm. And listen, this morning, people, brothers and sisters, we 
are being watched. We are, we, we're, we're not in. We're out in the open to the, to the Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and God and the Holy Spirit. We're being watched. And, and all he's waiting for us to do is say, Father, help me. Or, or, or bow down and pray to him for whatever you need because that's that's what he's saying here. So Nathaniel answered and said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. But Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believe thou, believest thou, thou shalt see greater things than these. Amen. So there's this promise to Nathaniel that he'd see greater things. And it's the same way with us in our life. If we, if we try to serve the Lord, it may not be worldly things, and we don't need the worldly things, but he said there to Nathaniel, we see greater things. And, uh, you know, if nothing else, reading the Bible, and, you, and, the, and the Holy Spirit speaks to you and says, this means this, or this means, you see greater things. Amen. So the simple things, so many times, are the greater things. And so don't, don't get uh, too upset when you when you sit down and read something and you, you don't get another turn around and read it the next day again mm -hmm. amen and, and see see what it tells you so this uh, uh here it is uh okay let me look at something else here and i'll be through uh i want you to turn to john 14 and what verse one John 14, verse 1. This is something that should, and you've heard it all of your life. Mm -hmm. But John 14, 1 says, Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Amen. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place. For you. That's the promise to his children. Mm -hmm. That's a promise to those that have accepted him as your Savior, those that have been uh, dipped in the blood, if you would. This is the promise that he made to us that love him and serve him. And if I go and prepare a place, now we know that he went because he died on the cross of Calvary, was tucked down and laid in the tomb for three days and then he sent he come out. So we know that he went, and this is a promise from God. Uh, he says, For I am there you may be also, and whether I go, you know, and the way you know. Mm -hmm. And Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Mm -hmm. and Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And so right. You that you that are here this morning, you need to understand this and remember this. When it says here, no man cometh unto the Father but by me, the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he's the one that died on the cross of Calvary for you. He's the one that shed his precious blood for you. Amen. He's the one that had him pull his beard, spit in his face, beat him, and all this. He did it for you. And so here he says here, No man cometh unto the Father, but if ye had known me, ye should have known my Father mm -hmm. also. From henceforth ye know him and have seen him. So they were saying, Jesus, Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it suffice us. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you? Mm -hmm. And yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. Amen. I want to read just a little bit more. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believeth thou not that I am the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the work. And you know, he's saying, if you've seen, if you've seen me, Jesus Christ, uh, was saying this, you've seen my Father also. And so, they are three in one. 
Mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit, the Son, and the Father. And he says this here, uh, that if you say me, you've seen the Father also. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. Mm -hmm. So he said, if I go, I'll come back. If I go, I'll, I'll go and prepare a place for you. So you that have, that have been saved, there's a place waiting for you. Mm -hmm. And he, and, and, and I mean, he said, I'll prepare a place for you. And I don't know how beautiful it'll be, but I know this, God, it took God six days to just build this old world. Can you imagine, can you imagine what he's built <laughs> And it means years, years, years. Amen. So, you know, it's something this morning that we we should be just so so wonderfully glad, uh, thankful for that that we we know this. Uh, we can sit and listen to it and not stick out our lip and say that's not right. Because we know it's God's word. And Amen. It's right. And so this morning. I, I thank you for listening, and I hope that it's been an encouragement to you. Uh, and hopefully, Brother Jerry will be back uh, next Sunday. If he's not, well, I'll have him again. Amen. We thank you so much for your attention. Amen.